resources are you looking at to get humanitarian assistance to Venezuela? Yeah, I, I had a very good talk with President Putin probably uh, over an hour. And we talked about many things. Venezuela was one of the topics. And he is uh, not looking at all to get involved in Venezuela, other than he'd like to see something positive happen for Venezuela. And I feel the same way. We want to get some humanitarian aid. Right now, people are starving. They, they have no water. They have no food. This is, Mr. Prime Minister, one of the uh, richest countries in the world 20 years ago. And now it's — they don't have food and they don't have water for their people. So we want to help on a humanitarian basis. And uh, I thought it was a very positive conversation I had with President Putin on Venezuela. Uh, Phil, uh, the president uh, was on the phone today for more than an hour with Vladimir Putin. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, the president says Putin is not looking at all, I'm quoting the president now, not looking at all to get involved in Venezuela. But, but that totally, totally contradicts what his secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, told me here in the Situation Room earlier in the week. Listen to this. He had an airplane on the tarmac. He was ready to leave this morning, as we understand it. And the Russians indicated he should stay. Uh, we, we think the situation remains incredibly fluid. I just want you to elaborate, Mr. Secretary, on what you said earlier, that uh, he was apparently ready to leave, head, o head off to the airport, uh, Maduro, but the Russians talked him out of that. Is that right? That's right. He so, was you blame, for, so you blame he, Russia he, he, for the violence right now? He was headed for Havana. That certainly sounds 180 degrees different than what we heard from the president today. No, I wouldn't say so from the president's perspective. Look, from day one, the president has created myths. His uh, subordinates can't speak when the president creates a myth. He's not just a liar. He creates an alternate universe for a group of Americans, 40 percent of the population or so, who don't follow, as a lot of people don't, international relations enough to, go, to know what's going on. The myth that when he stepped off the plane from the first meeting with North Korea, we're safer. We haven't gotten anywhere. The myth that Kim Jong-un maybe didn't know in a dictatorial uh, in a dictatorial country about how Otto Warmbier died. The myth on the electoral trail. I've got a secret path for Syria and for ISIS, which I suppose meant we're going to withdraw, as he proposed the president, and leave it to the Russians and the Syrians. What the president's done through Twitter and through his statements is to sell myths to the American people that have no uh, no connection with reality, like this myth about Russian involvement in Latin America, and then his subordinates can't speak again because as soon as they get out there, either the president will come after him on Twitter, think Tillerson, or the president will fire him. It's a myth-making industry, and it works. You know, Jackie, this isn't certainly the first time that the president seems to take Russia or Putin's word over the word of his intelligence community or his top officials. Well, it's a path of least resistance. Uh, the president doesn't think that, you know, Picking a fight with Vladimir Putin is worth it, um, particularly because it, anytime he talks about Putin, it ends up talking about you know Russian collusion, no collusion. So uh, and, you know, and the president also has a pattern of of believing strongmen over his own intel chiefs. I mean, the, Phil mentioned North Korea. There's lots of examples of that there too. Um, so it's just it, it it we just see this play out again and again. But Elena keeps playing out with Russia and Putin more than anything else. Of course it does. And I was speaking with Rudy Giuliani early, earlier today, and he said, that's fine. If you actually think that Russia did something wrong, that Putin did something wrong, let Mueller come forward and talk about that. I think Senator Lindsey Graham's letter um, was a perfect example of that, saying, if Barr has in fact represented what Mueller is saying, let him come forward and clarify to the public the extent of the threat of Russia. Mm -hmm.